Um, for the celebration itself, the ceremony, there's so many of the guys who got to come down, right, and, and be in the ring for Taker. It was Kevin Nash, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, um, Mankind, Savio Vega, Jeff Hardy. The list kind of went down and down and down. You were you were, came out as well. Um, what was the? Because uh, I want what I would have loved to have is when y'all were all in the ring for everybody to get to say something about Taker. You know, before you know the Taker came out to the ring. What was um what was going on in your mind though when you were in the ring with all those guys knowing what was about to happen? Oh man, you know, um I look at it a little bit different, man. You know, we were just there to you know to be there for that that moment for the Undertaker. Um that moment wasn't for us to to it, it was for the Undertaker. It was for him. Right. It was, or it was his moment. Um, I think if anything that we would have said, you know, could have overshadowed, you know, what what he said because you know we we know the Undertaker. He never was a guy that was going to talk a whole lot. And um, and one thing you don't want to do, man, is, is give a bunch of old wrestlers a microphone. <laughs> <laughs> well, Flair was out there, so that might have been a problem. We'd have been out there all night. I'm telling you, they the and then let me tell you, 1993. Woo! It, it, you know, it, 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 all the opponents that he's had, all the guys that he's worked, all the people who've come and gone in the 30 years that he's been there, there was only, what, a dozen guys that were requested to be in the ring at that time. And I would have to think that Undertaker approved every single person who went in there or picked every single person who went in there. I don't know the behind the scenes of it, but that's just my assumption. Did it mean something to you to be a part of that moment? Yeah, man, I must say, I must say... Uh... I really was on it, man. I really felt a certain way because there again, man, uh, I don't know. You never know. You never know where you stand until something like that happens uh, with, with someone. I know me and Taker, man, we, we're really good friends, you know. Uh, of course, a lot of people know that. I mean, I've, I've we broke bread together, you know. Uh, right. I've stayed at his house before, you know. Uh, uh, we played golf together together you know what i mean so we were really really tight um but you know i know um i was i was not like a, a original wwe guy you know i wasn't one of those guys that had been there in the war fighting against wcw you know what i mean and i always felt like you know the wwe guys had more of a bun than you know a wcw guy coming in bunding you know it's almost like yeah it's kind of like an outsider a little bit um, but when, when, when something like that happened, you go, wow, man, it's pretty cool. You know, um, cause you know, I was definitely called and I was asked to be a part of it and, um, to be a part of that group, you know, uh, um, I've said that before, man, I've said that before. And I talked to the young guys about this guy told me about, you know, being champion in the ring and being out of the, being champion out of the ring all the time. Um, that's what I tried to bring to the dance. That's what I tried to go out there and do. Um, I always said, man, I wanted my name to be to ring with the best wrestlers in the world when this thing was all over with. And when you look at the guys that was in that ring, you know, you know, Shawn Michaels, Triple H, you know, Nature Boy, Ric Flair, uh, God wins, Mick Foley, uh, Nash. Man, uh, man, Big Nash, you know, it's a hell of a group of talent, man. It's a hell of a group of talent to, uh, to be a part, to be a part of that group, man. It, it was awesome. It was awesome for me to be at the, you know, be to be one of the guys. I mean, as you said, it was 12. About uh, 12, yeah. Be, to be one of the 12 to be there physically to honor the Undertaker, make his last walk. That meant a, a hell of a lot to me. It really did. It really did. I was kind of choked up about it a little bit. Um, but I, I just just composed myself, you know, because I was looking good. Uh, that suit I had on, man, the shoes, man, the, the ostrich, man, it was it was it was looking real real good too. Uh, 
Yeah, yeah. So uh, I was like, man, just make sure you don't slip on the ramp on the way down. <laughs> I saw I saw when you did your intro, you said, I'm just going to kick it up a little bit. Let's get it up a little bit. I, I thought if I did it too, I, bang, everything <laughs> would come out from up under me and I would have went flying. So I say, man, just be careful. Do everything slow and think about it before you do it. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I noticed that. I did notice that. Um, now, were you were you uh, ringside or were you backstage whenever Vince was in the middle of the ring? Uh, we were uh, backstage. You're back. So you got to watch it on the monitor, I'm assuming, similar to people on television. I, I, I have seen Vince McMahon, again, my, the entirety of my life. And I know that you've been around him, obviously, way more than I ever have. He looked the most genuinely emotional that I've maybe ever seen him. You know, he kept looking up to the to the sky like, and I understand why. I think he was trying to fight back the tears, right? I mean, he looked like this is a creation that he probably saw that he had a lot to do with and that meant so much to his company, right? Without The Undertaker, I mean, who knows where WWE would have been because, again, he was the constant. He was that guy who was always on the top. When you needed somebody to be made, you go to The Undertaker. When you need a big main event, you go to The Undertaker all the way up until a, last year, right? Yeah, you yeah. always could go to The Undertaker, and you saw how much it meant to Vince. You know, what were, what were you thinking when you saw Vince getting choked up like that? Nah, man, um, I felt the same thing, you know. I mean, I got a, you know, wrestling company too, you know, and, and when, you, when you're when talking about your own, you know, every time we had it, freaking row wards, uh, and, I'm t- <laughs> and I'm talking about my guys, you know, I feel a certain way about talking about, you know, my creation and, and what I've, what I've done and what I know my guys are going to do for me one day, you know, um, Taker's going to be there for events forever. You know, he's going to be a guy that's going to be in his corner, you know, forever. And, um, uh, he's one of, he's one of Vince's soldiers, you know, and, um, uh, to be one of those soldiers, man, it means a lot too. You know what I mean? I'm serious, you know, because in every war we need, a we need a you need a we need a that guy that's going to lead, you know. And Vince McMahon has been that guy that has have, have led for so long, and uh, you know that that era, you know that era right there with with Taker, Stone Cold, Rock, you know, man, Vince was one of the boys too. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean, he was he was just right. He was right there with him, man. But but he, but he was still always to boss. He was still always to you know the the guy that was you know um, you know riding the ship uh, and, and and trying to take us to a certain place. And and when you when you when you're doing that, you know you take a lot of people with you. You got to take a lot of people with you. And Vince have taken a lot of people with them along this ride. People can say what they want to say just because you know uh, a lot of times people just don't look at it as a job. You know what I mean? Um, but of course, uh, I'm sure they got a lot of love for each other, Vince and uh, and Taker. But you know, along the ride, man, don't, don't think it was never uh, for a moment not business. Um, at the same time, you know, you just got to know how to separate the two. Uh, and and I think you know they really was able to do that and and create something very very special at the same time and uh, you know put WCW out of business. <laughs> you know, so it was a. Uh, it was a it was a ride, man. That was a ride, you know. Right. Like I say, uh, because there again, you know, Undertaker, Mean Mark, he's the guy that came through WCW. We saw him, you know. Hey, do you think? Do you think? Do you think for a minute we will be celebrating Mean Mark today? <laughs> no, no. Mean Mark wouldn't have got a lot of run. Exactly my point. You know what I mean? So, so you got to be able to, uh, you know, know exactly how you got here, man. And, and, you know, what this thing, you know, how this thing was really created back then, you know, the undertaker, a gimmick, you know, Paul bear, you know, together created something that will live through the history of, you know, in the annals of time, as far as wrestling goes, no one will ever be able to top, you know, an a, a gimmick like that. No. no one could ever even do a gimmick like that ever again, because if we did give it to someone and he was supposed to be the undertaker on Monday night, raw hell on Thursday night, he'll be a chef on, on Twitch. <laughs> 
<laughs> I do want to. I do want. That was funny. I do want to ask uh, <laughs> the. Uh, the, the uh, You brought up Paul Bear. How cool of a moment, though, was that? You know, um, it's just like for me, uh, <clears throat> the one thing um, I needed at the um, Hall of Fame um, ceremony with my brother and I uh, was a photo of Sherry Martell. I needed that photo behind us just so I could uh, pay respects to Sherry Martell and, you know, her being that legitimizer uh, that, that, mm. that, that one that made us you know, real people look at it, looked at us totally different when Sherry Martell was, you know, um, you know, placed with us. And I'm, and I'm sure, man, Paul Barrow, man, we got to give Paul Barrow his props, man. That guy, man. Absolutely. He was a, a legendary figure uh, in the business. I mean, he really, people, you know, need to do their research and really go in, in depth and, and understand what Paul Barrow really, really did to the business. He, he wasn't just a character. He was a guy that, that um, contributed more, in, in so many more ways uh, behind the scenes um, than, than one would know. Um, his, his knowledge uh, of the business um, as far as what guys' roles need to be and how they should go out there and play them, it goes much, much deeper. Um, and for, 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 for Undertaker you know, to know that, for Mark to know exactly, you know, man, I'm with Paul Parra. <laughs> this is huge. Right. Um, and Percy it, Pringle. Oh, right. man. It's going to take me um, somewhere, you know, that perhaps I could never take myself, you know, and uh, to, pre to appreciate it and give um, Paul that props. Uh, it was uh, it was awesome. That was that was the best part of that um, whole um, thing for me was um, having Paul Bear just there with the urn, you know, it just, oh, it just made me feel good, man. It just made me feel a certain way. Yeah, it was good stuff. Now, the, the obvious last question regarding this, because um, The Undertaker did say it's time for The Undertaker to rest in peace, which, which actually, when I saw him say that, it shook him a little bit, and it shook me. When he said that, I was like, oh, wow. The Undertaker, you know, this is him shedding the character and laying him to rest. But is it? Will we ever see The Undertaker wrestle again? That's the question everyone's always going to ask. Will it happen? Can it happen after that emotional of a send off? Right. You know, uh, my thing is, I really think, I really think it, 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 it may be. Uh, I think it should be, especially coming off of perhaps the the one thing that it's going to be hard for anyone to top going forward including himself, and that's the Boneyard match. I agree. You know, um, so I feel like it's really no better time to say farewell and leave them with a movie to watch uh, for the rest of their lives at the same time. And and you're going to be able to, be able to watch me do it the way I've done it, you know, since the beginning. You know, you're going to be able to watch, you know, The Undertaker go out there and, to be the American badass, the Undertaker, all in one, you know. So I just think it's a, you know, a great way to walk away. You know, I really don't think he's going to be able to top that, uh, that that farewell, uh, the Boneyard match. I and think about it in the most unique WrestleMania of all time, right? That spanned two days. There was something like eighteen matches, or felt that much, or you know, fifteen, sixteen matches. There were a lot, <laughs> and there's no crowd. Right at the beginning of the pandemic, after coming off some less than, and this, is hip, this isn't me saying it, this is him saying it, in his mind, less than stellar performances mm -hmm. uh, inside the ring against Roman and Goldberg, most notably, Undertaker can go out there at WrestleMania and have the only match that anyone is going to remember. That's the only match that anybody will ever talk about from WrestleMania 35. Right. Yeah, yeah. I can't I can I don't remember, remember I, don't, I don't remember a whole lot. I remember the girls doing the uh, match in the building and they, you know, who jump it. I but I don't that remember that was money in the bank. Yeah, right. Exactly. I don't even remember exactly what it was. Yeah. But was, but for him to create and, and along with AJ and, and Triple H and everybody else who was involved in the match itself, but for him to one, wrestle a match that had never been done before in a style that he had never participated in before on the grandest stage of all against a guy who he had a great buildup with verbally 
but not a lot of physical altercation with the guy he thought he was going to put a bow on it inside the squared circle. Because if you're going to do a boneyard match, you don't think AJ Styles would be the first guy you think of, right? You're like, oh, maybe maybe we'll do Bray and Taker in a boneyard match, right? Yeah, yeah. We'll do Sting and the Undertaker in a boneyard match. AJ's a guy. If you want to get you know a five star match out of somebody in the squared circle, the twenty by twenty, that's who you go with. All those things aside, Taker's still able to reinvent himself in his final match, invent an entire new match, and literally get to ride into the moonlight, not off into the sunset, ride into the moonlight with yeah. Metallica playing him out. There's no. I, I when I saw it at the time, I think we talked about it on the show. I said, if there's ever a time to go out. It's you had the match of the year at WrestleMania. <laughs> nah, nah. New match. I mean, it's it's the best. It's nah, I mean, absolute you, best. You ask me. That's why I say you know. I mean, of course he he could come back, um, but I just think it was a fitting way to go ahead and exit and man, live some life, man, live life, and, and have some have some fun. You know what I mean? He got you know his his young daughter. You know she was there. Doing this one dance that you know created called a slinky, and uh, you know <laughs> she, she. I mean, he's had a lot of years, man, to watch her grow up and uh, have some fun uh, and, and do something other than just entertain everyone else. Um, do something other than just you know bringing pleasure to you know everyone else. And, and and the thing is, I I I trust me, I understand exactly where he is right now because. I loved my my wrestling career. I loved being in the ring. I loved performing. But I'm going to tell you right now, I so love being where I'm at right now in my life, you know, other than this pandemic, if, if we can, you know, get this vaccine, get this Moderna, um, this Pfizer, you know, uh, it's another one just came out. What's that other one? I, mean, you I know, haven't heard that one. It just came out as 70% active. You know what I mean? But well, uh, the other two are like 90 and 95. So maybe saying, should... I take all three of them. Like, <laughs> like I say, you you do that. They, they got to work. But no, nah, man, uh, it, it's about uh, being able to enjoy this thing, man, and spend some of that money. <laughs> you know what I'm saying, man? I still got your money, man, in vaults. You know what I'm trying to, you know, unlock and trying to spend it, man. Because I told my kids, ain't going to be no money left. You know, it might be some assets, but ain't going to be no cash. <laughs> I'm spending it all, you know, so so that, definitely. Uh, you can't take it with you. And you know what? If there's any if there's any guy, though, honestly, who's earned the right to sit back out on his porch off a lake and go fishing every day, eat what he wants to yeah. drink, what he wants to do, what he wants to and enjoy the fruits of his labor. It is the undertaker. No, nah, man, I, I'm, I'm a firm believer. I'm serious. And I'm, I'm not just playing as far as uh, being able to kick back, enjoy it. Uh, you know, me, you know, I know me, me and the kids, we think about jumping in the RV tomorrow and just going to Galveston, you know, just to hang out on the beach, you know, fly my helicopters and, um, you know, play my my switch, <laughs> you know, um, come back on Wednesday. That, that, that's what I'm thinking about. Uh, yeah, yeah. Just because, man, you got to be able to enjoy life. Just because you just don't know what's going to happen from one day to the next, 